Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 17th of December 2018 and the time has just gone at 9.15 GMT. Uh, it's been a fairly subdued start to the European session this morning. Most of the major European indices are slightly in, in the red. and We had a fairly mixed session in Asia overnight. Um, volatility, a lack of volatility was, was probably a common theme uh, in Asia overnight. Some markets finished higher, some markets finished lower, but overall we haven't seen a whole lot of movements. Uh, essentially, traders are still nervous about the slowdown uh, of, the, of, the, of the slowdown in the global economy. At the back end of last week, on Friday, we had disappointing uh, retail sales figures and also industrial production figures out of China. That's still playing on traders' minds. And also at the back end of last week, we had underwhelming um, service PMI figures out of Germany, and we also had very disappointing manufacturing and service PMI figures out of France. So it kind of adds weight, adds kind of weight to the argument that the eurozone is slowing down as well. So it's obviously quite worrying when the eurozone is slowing down, uh, and also so is China, the second largest economy in the world. Uh, over the weekend, we've heard from the Bank of International Settlements, and essentially they stated that while central bank policy uh, begins to get uh, get, um, kind of emerges years after the credit crisis and begins to kind of normalize and we head back to a, 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 an era of kind of more we move away from absolute rock bottom interest rates we could see further sell-offs uh, in, in global stock markets so traders are still a bit nervous about that um, that's essentially the kind of the, the, the major and uh, uh, that added to the ongoing of course political certainty surrounding brexit uh, Theresa May's deal um, that she's managed to uh, um, cobbled together um, with, the, with the European Union is deeply unpopular within the, within Westminster. Uh, but also, what's also very unpopular is is the is the idea of a second referendum. And what's also very unpopular is the idea of a no deal Brexit. So while this uncertainty can kind of continues on, rambles on, it's likely to be hang, hang over the British pound. Uh, and there, that there is essentially the kind of the major topics and themes uh, of the past seventy two hours. And I'll take a look at some of the major markets and see how things are getting on. Like I said, European equity markets are a bit, a bit, a bit lower uh, this morning, but not, not too low. Um, so let's take a look here at the FTSE 100. Uh, as you can see, it's been in a, you know, ever since August, it's been losing quite a, quite a lot of, quite a lot of ground. Class example of a, of a, of a downward trend, lower lows and lower highs. Granted, we are off the lows of, 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 of last week, but still, the market is still very much uh, in the downward trend. And while we were in below um, the this the 50 day moving average this blue line here which coincides uh, with the the psychologically important 7000 mark and it's likely we could see further losses um, on the FTSE 100 so we could look at having it back down towards the recent low um, this area here which comes into play at 6678 and then we could, if we help, help go below that again, we could be looking heading back down towards 6,500. And like I said, any rallies are likely to run to resistance in around the kind of 7,000 mark. And if we go beyond that, um, the area of 7,220, 7,200, that could also pose a, um, a potential area of resistance on the FTSE 100. Taking a look now at what's going on on the, um, on the DAX, the Euro market. So the Euro, the Euro market is even, actually even in worse shape than the FTSE 100. Uh, as you can see here, if you draw a line from the, from the highs of June to the highs of July and also to the highs of September, granted it did actually trade a bit above uh, this particular trend line, but there's a classic example of a of a trend line resistance in, coming into play on the on the DAX, the Germany 30. Um, while we were in below this trend line here, it's likely we could see further losses on the Germany 30. Uh, we've seen a steady series of lower lows and lower highs. Classic example of a downward trend. And what was it, once again, while we remain, we remain below this trend line here, we, we could see further losses. So if you do look to kind of push further to the downside on the uh, on, on the DAX, we could be looking at retesting the recent lows, which come into play uh, just south of 10,584. 10, and if you go beyond that, we could be looking at heading, heading down to 10,400. Uh, any rallies? Cover it resistance at the psychologically important 11,000 mark, and then if you go beyond that, the this blue line here at the 50-day moving average might come into play, uh, at, at, which which is uh, at 11,528. Uh, 11, I take a look now at the U.S. markets, and we had a very interesting move, right, very interesting finish for the close 
uh, on the S&P 500 last Friday. If you take the S&P, sorry, we're currently looking, uh, that's the, uh, that's the, um, the Dow Jones. I'll first of all look at the S&P 500 and then I'll come on to the Dow Jones in a second. Um, a very interesting, we could see a very interesting session with the, with the S&P 500. If you draw a trend line between the lows of February 2016 and November 2016, you get this trend line here. And as you can see, zooming in, this trend line was well respected uh, back in October and also in November. And so the more trend line is respected, the more the more, time, the more times the market bounces off trend line support, the more, the more confident you can become the market is going to hold above it. But whenever you drop back below it, uh, that's actually, that trend line could then actually be, go from being a support line to being a resistance line. So as we can see here on a couple of occasions recently, it's managed to bounce off of it. Uh, we did trade below it, bounced around it, and now we, and as of Friday, we closed firmly below it, and we actually closed just south of the psychologically important 2,600 mark. Now, the index futures are pointing high, are, are pointing that we're going to open above 2,600, but we're still well below this trend line uh, support here. So this trend line may actually now begin to act as resistance. And if we, and what we could potentially see is we, we might see the market rally back up towards the trend line in around the kind of 2,640-44 region before potentially turning lower yet again because we have seen a, a, a few examples of lower highs. We've also seen a couple of lower lows as well on the S&P 500. And if you do manage to take off the recent low at 2,582, that could take us back to a level not seen since April in a 2,553. Any moves to the upside? Likely to run into resistance in around the psychology important of 2,700 and then beyond that 2,800. Um, one of the kind of strong, strong uh, one of the tenets of of, um, of Dow theory is that the averages must confirm each other. And as as we saw there, the S&P 500 was previously being supported by the trend line support from the lows of February 16 through the lows of February of November 6, 2016 as well. Similarly, if we take a look here at the Dow Jones, if you, if you draw a trend line between the lows of February, March, April, May, you get this trend line along here. And there's a few occasions, granted, where the market managed to trade below it, but it did, did always manage to kind of close back above it until now. And now what we're seeing is, similar to the S&P 500, the, the Dow Jones is trading, is, is, is closed firmly below its respective trend, uh, trend line. And the Dow theory says the averages must confirm each other. So, when both averages were above their respective trend line supports, you can be more confident both markets are going to move higher. Now that both markets have closed firmly below their respective trend line supports, you can be more confident that both markets are going to move lower. Obviously, if one goes above the trend line and one remains below it, you can then be less confident of which way, um, which, which way the market is going to move. But while both are heading in the same direction, you can be more confident that that particular move, and in this case, a downward move, is going to continue. So, we're tra the we're, 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 we um, the the index futures are suggesting the Dow Jones is going to open north of twenty four thousand, and even if we do manage to open north of twenty four thousand, we could we, we could have a scenario whereby we might head up towards this trend line here uh, in around the twenty four thousand six hundred region before potentially turning lower yet again because we've seen a nice series of lower lows and and, uh, and also lower highs and lower lows along here on the on the on the Dow Jones. If you do take out 24,000 and if you do take out uh, 23,877, that could take us back towards the May lows of uh, 23,539. Any rallies uh, in, the, in the Dow Jones, if you manage to go back above the trend line support, may run into resistance at this red line here, the 2 moving average, which comes into play just south of 26,000. We can see in a number of occasions it acted as both support and resistance recently. And if a metric has acted as both support and or resistance recently, it makes it the more likely it will do so again in the future. Take a look now at what's going on in the gold market. So gold had a, had a sizable sell-off between April and August. Uh, but ever since August, the market has been broadly been pushing lower. Sorry, apologies, broadly been, been pushing higher. It's been recovering at a slow and steady enough rate. So it's so kind of higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. And we, we hit um, we hit a multi-month high only at, 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 the, at the early early point of this of this month. So we're broadly ever so ever so um, 
ever so slowly grinding out higher highs and higher lows. So if you do manage to continue on this kind of upper trend that, that's been in play since August, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around the 1265 area. Uh, any move to the downside may run into and it might may encounter support in around uh, 1225. This, this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, and you notice how it acted as support on a, on a couple of occasions recently. And once again, if the market has acted as support recently, it makes it more likely to act as support again in the near term. And even if you do drop below 1225, as long as you remain above the kind of psychologically important 1200, the outlook for gold could remain positive. <laughs> Take a look now at what's going on on the oil market. Uh, the oil market has, has stabilized a lot recently. Uh, in the last five or six trading sessions, it's been very quiet in comparison to the previous number of weeks. So looking at, at our Brent crude oil, we can see here that after hitting a multi-year high in October, it's, it's in, in a very aggressive downward trend. Classic example of lower lows and lower highs. And we are off the lows of the, we're above the November lows, but we haven't really made that much ground. So you could argue that, that, that there is some sort of a bit of a bottom uh, forming in around here. And while we remain off the November lows, uh, which which come into play, which with the November lows are in the region of uh, 57.50, while we remain above the, the November lows, we could see the market push on higher. So we could see the market heading back up towards the $65 a barrel mark or $67.50 a, a, a barrel mark. Um, but ultimately, we're, we're very much in a, in a downward trend. And should we take off the November lows, we then, we then that would actually be quite bearish in itself. And now we can now, now point to, to levels not seen um, for over a year if we manage to take off the November lows. And we could be looking heading back down towards 56 spot 73 or back down towards $55 a barrel. <laughs> and uh, keep an eye what's going on now on the WTI market. A very similar situation whereby after hitting a multi-year high in uh, in October, under undergone a very, very aggressive sell-off. As you can see here, the lower lows and lower highs all the way down. Similar situation here. We're above the, off the no November lows, $49.29. While we remain above that, and while we can hold above the kind of $50 a barrel mark, we could see the market push in higher from here because there's a lot of bargain under us uh, potentially looking to kind of snap up um, relatively cheap oil. And if you do manage to kind of push on higher from here, we could be looking heading it back up towards this region here in uh, just north of $58 a barrel. And if you go beyond that, the kind of psychologically important $60 a barrel will then, be, will then become an area to keep an eye out for, which coincides with the, this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. Uh, if you do manage to take out the recent low, the November lows of 49.26, we could be looking at heading back down towards $47 a barrel. And, that's, and, and if you do manage to hit that area, keep in mind we haven't seen $47 a barrel on WTI since December, since September 2017. So we will be talking about 15-month lows should they be reached. Uh, take a look now what's going on on the euro versus the US dollar. So... The, which, as I mentioned, we had some disappointing economic indicators out of France and Germany last Friday. Ongoing political uncertainty over uh, the budget in, in Italy as well. Uh, so the euro has been very much in a kind of downward trend uh, that, uh, since, since, since September, which fits in with the wider downward trend since April. So while we continue, to, while we can essentially hold below the kind of 115, 115, 10 mark this area here, it's likely we could lose further ground. And we could be looking at retesting the, uh, the November lows of one spot 21.16. And then if you go below that, we could be heading back down towards the one spot 11.10 region. Any moves to the upside are likely to run, run, run into resistance in at one spot 15 or one spot 15.10. And then if you go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards the, um, the September high, uh, which comes into play just north of 118. Take a look now at pound dollar. Like I said, there's a lot of uncertainty hanging over the pound because of Brexit. Uh, to be perfectly honest, it seems to me that the, that the, policy, uh, the, the politicians at Westminster don't, need, don't seem to know uh, what's going on in relation to Brexit, in relation to what, what's going to happen next. So therefore, how, how, the, how are the financial markets supposed to know? Ultimately, it's, it's about this. If it appears that the UK is going to have a, a, a relatively soft-speaking Brexit, or, or it's the softest kind of Brexit possible, that is likely to be beneficial to the pound because it'd be good for business and it'd be likely that there'd be uh, little or, or little or a minimal 
uh, economic disruption or financial disruption because of because of the uh, the EUK's departure from the European Union. But on the flip side of the coin, if it looks like we're heading towards a scenario where there's a no deal Brexit by perp uh, even by purpose or by accident, if we're, it looks like we're heading towards a no deal Brexit scenario, that's likely to put a, a lot of pressure on the pound and. Even though some of the economic indicators of the UK have been fairly strong in recent months, and in my view, the, Europe, the, the UK economy is in better shape than the Eurozone, it's the Brexit uncertainty that is hanging over, it's hanging over it. And it's, and it's very evident here. You know, the pound sold off heavily between April and August, staged a bit of a comeback, uh, but since September, once again, the uncertainty has kind of kicked back in. And like I said, only it was, it was only last week. It was only last week we were actually back at levels. Um, not seen since April 2017 uh, on the pound versus the US dollar. So it's very much to the, downs to the downside of the trend. Uh, if, if pressure comes on, on, the, on the pound again, we could have looked at heading back down towards the recent lows of one spot 24.67. And if you go below that, we could be looking at heading back down towards the uh, 123.65 area. Uh, any move to the upside in the pound, pound dollar are likely to run into resistance in around the kind of 127 one spot, 2750 area, and then if you go beyond that, 130 is a big kind of psychological number to, to keep an eye out for. Uh, taking a quick look at the week ahead, and the week ahead article can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com and under news and analysis, uh, you, you will find the, uh, the week ahead article. Uh, so scrolling ahead, uh, later, later today, in about half an hour's time, we have Eurozone CPI numbers coming out. Tomorrow and Tuesday, uh, FedEx have second quarter figures out. Uh, Darden Restaurants have second quarter, second quarter figures out also on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we have the update from the Federal Reserve, and it's, the markets are pricing in a, a, rate, a rate rise of 0.25%. Um, but keep in mind, um, Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, said a couple of policymakers at the Federal Reserve believe that the, the Federal Reserve's interest rate is near or getting close to the, 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 um, is getting close to the neutral rate. So the update... And the statement that, that will follow the the, um, the Fed meeting on Wednesday will be closely watched. On Wednesday, um, we all, we have UK CPI numbers out. On Wednesday, we have Canadian CPI and retail sales figures out. On Thursday, we have the Bank of Japan interest rate decision. On Thursday, we have the Bank of England interest rate decision. And on Thursday, we also have the UK retail sales. Uh, just also worth, worth, worth pointing out, uh, for those of you on our trading platform, um, keep an eye on the insights section of our, of our trading platform. Insights, if you go to Market Pulse, second option down is, our, is insights. Some of the updates that we do in terms of written content for myself and the other, other analysts get posted to insights. Some of it gets posted to our news site, which I was just on, we'll show you the week ahead article. It's also, we're keeping it off for the chart forum section. The chart forum section can be, once again, can be found under the, under the market pulse and the chart for, form section can be updated or, or, or by anybody and myself and some of the other analysts um, up, update it regularly whereby we take effectively take a screenshot of a particular market and just comment on what, what we think what kind of price action that we that we could see that's also free um for any of our clients to actually contribute to as well so please feel free to do so uh, lastly, if you have any comments on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.